Well, Paul, first of all, thank you for joining us. It's good to see you. Uh, thanks so much. It's uh, great to be here. So coming from cybersecurity, what are some steps uh, the average business can take to make sure that their voice apps are secure and maintain user privacy? Um, I would say that it's very similar, similar to what a small business should be thinking about uh, in securing their customer data in the first place. You take that from the physical world and apply it to digital. So you want to think about who's going to have access um, to the data where you're storing it after the fact. You want to think about um, are you, do you need to encrypt that data um, that you're up offloading? Um, I think that you also need to think about uh, how you're, you're, um, where you're storing it. Like, what is the cybersecurity posture of, like, are you using um, Airtable or something like that? And is it secure enough for the type of information that you're storing? So really keeping your customer in mind. And sometimes even as simple as if, this, if I was my customer, what would I want done with my information if I didn't know what was going on behind the scenes? So, Paul, you run uh, your company is called MB Usable Security. Um, are there any cybersecurity privacy concerns that are specific to voice apps that are often overlooked? Yes, uh, I would say that uh, one of the main things is uh, con con context, right? So where are people using these applications? So I think a lot of times we get really excited about voice being first, and we don't always think about um, is the type of information that I'm asking for something that someone should be saying out loud? So are there times when we need to push something uh, either through the Amazon or have the, send a link or something that people can log in silently? Maybe I'm in a crowd of people or something like that. Um, an example of that would be something sometimes in the healthcare, right? You might not want to go through whatever list, whether it's a diagnosis or some kind of understanding of um, uh, some diagnosis you've received in public because that might be a little more private. So just thinking about that as far as the user experience is concerned. Yeah, I love that point. And so are there any uh, unique opportunities for innovation in this space when we talk about marrying together cybersecurity and voice? Um, yeah, I think that there are a ton. So we're seeing a lot in terms of voice biometrics. Uh, when we were at Project Voice, you know, we saw a couple of of individuals who are doing some really great work in that space. And so that's just being able to listen to your voice and Alexa, not only using that for personalization, but to authorize uh, whether you're able to make certain transactions and the other. I think that with things like uh, quick links and stuff coming out, we're gonna be able to see some really cool uh, one-time password. I know like I've been working on some stuff with clients around like audio one-time passwords and what that looks like and how those things can be generated. So I think that there's going to be a lot of interesting um, second and third factor authentication possibilities within the voice space, um, just because it already lends itself um, really beautifully to some of the stuff we're already doing to secure uh, data.